Yo, yo, family, familia. What up, what up, sending love. <clears throat> Today, I want to record this to share a message that fans of Jim Newman, Jim Newman, the non-dual communicator, I invite you and I recommend to listen to Peter Brown because I think he counterbalances Jim in a really beautiful way. I want to start by reading a short quote from Peter here from his latest posthumous book, Liberation Beyond Imagination. He says, uh, in truth, this quote unquote void is not an absence, but a fullness. Describing it as nothingness is sloppy and misleading, as it implies a lack rather than the rich, ineffable nature of what is. So I just read that quote this evening, and I found it uh, really fascinating. And I feel like it, that quote encapsulates the difference between Peter and Jim's teaching. And Jim wouldn't call his uh, message a teaching. Jim has a very uh, unique vocabulary. And don't get me wrong, I love Jim's uh, vocabulary. I love Jim's way of speaking about this that is, this mystery, this, uh, this nothing, this absence, as he calls it, this uh, nothing that is happening. Um, because Jim's pointers have a lot of potency. Um, they can really, he's, he's kind of like a non-dual butcher, you know, <clears throat> he can really slice through a lot of conceptual fabrication and really blast some holes in the sense of solidity. His pointers have a lot of potency and I've received a lot from Jim. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> they can really snap you out of um, many layers of, of hypnosis, conceptual overlay, and the strength of his message is that it's so simple, it's so direct, it's not elaborate. He, he uses very few words in his responses to people, and his approach is basically to suffocate the sense of a solid, separate me. He tries to give absolutely nothing to that sense of a solid, separate continuous, coherent, objectifiable, identifiable me that we all typically assume ourselves to be. Um, Jim has identified that as, you could say, the root concretization or solidification that the rest of our solidifications hinge upon. And he's basically taking an approach of trying to suffocate that separate me sense, which, as he says, isn't really there as a solid, definable entity. Um, if you look closely, the what you call the me is revealed to be, like the rest of reality, an unresolvable, unpin-downable gestalt of many different sensations, images, colors, textures, um, impressions. And of course, these words I'm using are also unresolvable, unfindable as anything solid, as anything identifiable. So, anywho, Jim's approach is really to address that root solidification and attempt to reveal in one fell swoop that it doesn't exist in the way that we assume it to be. It's not solid in the way that we assume it to be. Uh, 
Yeah. So that's the strength of Jim's teaching. He's, uh, he's fantastic in many ways. He's hilarious. Both Peter and Jim are hilarious. And at the same time, there can be, as Peter pointed out there, there can be a shadow to Jim's teaching. And I've identified this before myself. Um, and Peter kind of put his finger on it there. When you constantly speak about reality in negative terms as an absence or a nothing, the strength of that is that it doesn't give the mind, it doesn't give, it doesn't give the me, the separate individual, anything to grab onto really. It's like, what is a nothing? What is an absence? So it's hard to concretize or solidify a nothing or an absence or project something onto it. So that's the strength of that type of language. The downside of that type of language, as Peter pointed to, is that it can give an impression of a sense of lack. And the me will tend to turn that type of language into an image of some kind of empty void, some kind of abyss, some kind of dark, black, scary nothingness. And it will start to solidify that mental image and it, it can it can quickly lead to quite a actually dreary and nihilistic space it can lead to a very depressive disorienting nihilistic type of space um which yeah you know that can be a natural part of the spiritual path um i've heard people at least one guy comes to mind who I've heard saying to Jim, yeah, I went to your retreat and now I'm on your Zoom call and just letting you know I'm in a space of extremely acute despair and and uh, really struggling over here. And I don't think I ever heard anyone say anything like that to Peter, even though, yeah, I've... I've uh, listen to more um, and attended more of Peter's meetings. So maybe that maybe there's something to look at there because I, I do think that Jim's style can blast a big hole in people's current belief system and kind of pull the rug out from under them. But then what it gives them what ends up happening is that they take his description of this nothing or this absence and they create a mental image of what that is and they concretize it and they take his descriptions of meaninglessness and purposelessness and pointlessness and worthlessness and no one could possibly want this and it's valueless and these statements can be good pointers in the right moment but they can also be completely misapprehended and mis uh, and distorted and concretized and turned into quite a dreary and, you know, nihilistic, solipsistic, really a, a downer worldview by an individual, by an individual. So that is the um, shadow of Jim's teaching. And, and as well, because Jim focuses so much on the supposed me on the fact that there is actually no solid me and that at a certain point the sense of solidity of the solid me can just kind of fall away or one can notice that it was never there that that solidity was never there because he focuses so much on that um you end up hearing about that constantly. People are constantly asking him about it. He's constantly bringing it up. And so it can also create this ambient sense of none of us are there yet. Jim is the only one for whom the me has dropped away. I want to be like Jim. I wish I could be like Jim. I wish my me could drop away and I could be free like Jim. It can create, similar to what Peter said, this sense of lack or this sense of something hasn't happened yet. Um, Jim has something that I don't. And of course, a lot of his other language completely goes against this. Jim 
often very clearly states, this is it already. This is what is longed for already. This is unconditional love. This is unconditional freedom. Nothing, nothing is a problem. This is it. However, because there is this constant, uh, constant discussion of the dropping, the supposed dropping away of the me, which, as Jim also points out, isn't even a real thing, because there was never a solid me to begin with. It's just simply noticed at some point that that's the case, and perhaps noticed with increasing clarity that that's the case. Um, yeah, because that is such a fixation and a common topic in his meetings, it can create that ambient sense that something, it can fuel that, that you know, it can fuel the, the sense of neediness that something needs to happen, something hasn't happened yet, something happened for Jim that hasn't happened for me. I need to get what he's talking about. Um, so, anywho... Especially if you're someone who's a fan of Jim and you've listened to a lot of his stuff. And if if it's if anything I've said about the shadows of Jim's message resonates at all, then this is especially re relevant for you, I would say. And the relevance is, um, yeah, check out Peter Brown. That's that's the invitation. Check out the teaching of Peter Brown. Um Peter has about 80, well, far more than 80. There's, there's a tremendous treasure trove of audio on his website, theopendoorway.org. But specifically, the Non-Duality podcast has put out about 80 hours of his talks on uh, YouTube and Spotify. And I can link those uh, beneath this video. Peter's Books are also incredible. This new posthumous book, it's ironically like 800 pages, and yet, of course, every page is just relentlessly pointing at the same thing, the one wholeness, the one completion that we are. But Peter is truly, truly a master of language, truly uh, an artist with language, and comes at it from so many different angles. He's he's really, really incredible. Um and Peter's emphasis is entirely different from Jim's, actually, uh, in a really beautiful way. Peter, you know, Peter's entire teaching is called the yoga of radiant presence. So his term for the absolute, for what reality is, is radiant presence. He points out that, you know, undeniably, there is this presence. There is this presence here, this fullness life is, uh, <laughs> nature is, experience is, and it's absolutely full of this radiance. It's full of, the, of, these, of these radiating qualities and textures and shapes that we typically, uh, you know, take to be these solid definable objects. But if you look closely at anything, if you go into anything, Peter points out with resounding clarity that Anything that you look at closely opens up into a bottomless infinity of detail. It opens up into total indeterminacy, total unresolvability, um, total, you know, slipperiness. Everything is slippery. Everything is, is constantly morphing and shifting and slipping away. And yet, above all, Peter instructs us to look at this absolute juiciness, this vitality, this aliveness, this positivity, this explosive fullness that is just, you know, spontaneously generating itself um, from nowhere, from pure presence, from this, you know, immovable, rock-solid, unstainable, unstoppable fact of pure infinity here and now, he just relentlessly directs our attention toward the toward the presence of this and toward the absolutely unstoppable radiant juiciness of this the lusciousness the richness 
the astonishment, the meaningfulness, the purposefulness. Yes, unresolvable meaningfulness, unresolvable purposefulness. You cannot resolve anything precisely. You cannot resolve precisely what the meanings are or what the purposes are. And yet Peter points out that this juiciness, this suggestiveness, this artistry, this, you know, um, purposefulness is woven into every detail. Everything is precisely as it is, even though what it precisely is cannot be defined. Um, so Peter was really a master of directing our attention toward what Jim calls the appearance. Jim kind of dismisses this as the appearance. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the appearance. And there, there can be a bit of almost a sense of a duality. I sometimes find with Jim's teaching where there's a feeling of like, okay, so there's the appearance and then there's the nothing which can never appear, the nothing which can never be perceived yet can only be realized when the me drops away. And I find some of this, I feel some of this languaging is, is, is a bit sloppy. So much of Jim's languaging is incredibly brilliant, incredibly genius. Like, I, I love some of his phrasings, like a release into unknowing, you know. So many gorgeous phrasings Jim has, and yet there can be this subtle sense of a duality created between the appearance and the nothing. And Peter was an absolute master of demonstrating the complete and total seamlessness of this one completion, this one wholeness, this one presence. And Peter demonstrated the astonishing nature of this presence through inviting us to go deeply into the artistry and the, the magicalness, the miraculousness of what is appearing, of the radiance, of any detail, any detail opens up again into bottomless infinity of, of information, of sparklingness, of radiant <laughs> rainbow uh, hyperdimensionality. Reality is revealed to be this omnipresent hyper tapestry that is just utterly effulgent utterly overflowing with this juiciness, this vividness, this lusciousness. And in that, you can really feel the, uh, the Vajrayana, the Dzogchen influence on Peter's teaching. Um, yeah. The sense of that tantric juiciness, that tantric vividness. Peter would invite us into that and invite us to discover the absolute therein, right here and now, as this <laughs> unstoppable, overflowing buzzingness, sparklingness, shimmeringness, you know, that which cannot be said, yet he was really a master of going about as close as, as you can get with language to putting a finger on this, and then repeatedly showing that you can't actually pin it down, that it is truly unresolvable. And as you go deeper and deeper into unresolvability, it's revealed that all things are completely unresolvable, including what you call yourself. Um, and, yet, and yet here you are, and here we are, and we are this miraculous, astonishing, undeniable wholeness that is here, we are that. It can't be resolved, and yet here it is, and here we are, and we are that. And Peter was remarkably, remarkably clear about that fact, and his style, I feel, is really a fantastic antidote for anyone who might be, might have received a lot from, from Jim, but found themselves grappling with some of the shadows that I've outlined here. So thank you for listening. Much, much love to both Jim and Peter. Deeply, deeply grateful for both of you gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for all you've done.
Thank you. Much love, much peace, everybody. Thank you for listening. Take good care. Take good care. Peace.